Y'all, I'm athletic. People can, everybody sees the gray hairs and they're like, come on, man. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, first of all, man, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a, this is like a dream come true, and and it's not the who we played or or win in that, but the environment tonight, and uh, you know just the turnout, the crowd, the energy. I mean, it's every coach's dream to be able to um, like compete in that kind of environment, and and then watch your guys like be energized by the crowd and. And I thought um, I thought our guys had energy tonight, and and we executed. We didn't turn the ball over, and uh, you know when when they made a run, we responded. Uh, just just so proud of them, man. And uh, you know there's always within the team. There's always adversity and things that happen, and life throws things at you, and you got to respond to it. And, and you know today, um, I won't go into it, but there was some some adversity that was thrown our way outside of our our own doing, and anything that we could control and just to watch the guys rally around each other and and really support each other and 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 get this win tonight uh was just a, a strong testament to their character and the type of people that they are it felt like one of your more complete defensive performances this year what kind of contributed to that i thought in the first half uh we did a really good job early and then we messed up on some ball screen coverages and um, got they were able to make some threes. And at halftime, the team said, Coach, I think if we do this, it will make it easier for us or, or better for us, right? And and so the fact that they were thinking about where how the problems were taking place and they came up with the solution, uh, I mean that was that was big time, and so and then the second half they went out and executed the thing that they said they wanted to do. It appeared like pick up uh, it was pick and roll was favoring the left side of the floor. Was that easier to to make adjustments against? No, nah, I couldn't tell which side of the floor it looked like to me. Uh, in all my years at Baylor, we, we didn't when teams were no middle defense. We didn't they didn't run ball screens on the side, and I didn't see. I saw saw them operating in the seams, which makes it hard for you to be able to keep on a side. So, yeah, I didn't think side of the floor mattered. Could you have possibly fathomed a 42 to 16 advantage in the paint? It looked like you guys were really intent on getting inside. Yeah, no, that, that was definitely a point of emphasis that we wanted to get to the paint either in transition or in the half court, and the, the guys executed it. What was the difference for Keontae tonight? Uh, legs, uh, they didn't double team as much. Um, so legs and the ability to play one on one. And I mean, he's, it's hard to stop him one on one. You feel like you had more motion in that offense, a lot of cutters coming to give Marquise targets to get the ball to? We definitely had more movement. And, um, but I thought Keese made the simple plays. Like he got off the ball when he had two on him. And it allowed us, you know, to, to be able to get easy, some easy shots. And uh, sometimes he hangs on to it too much. Um, and today I thought he, you know, when even when he was making shots, he was making simple plays. Coach, you talked about after the game in Waco, how emotional that was for you on a personal level, obviously returning to a place that's very special to you, coaching against Scott Drew for that first time. For the second time around, was it a little bit more normal, a little bit more like just another game, or, or were you still having some of those same emotions pre and post game? Well, it was more like a normal game, but the, the circumstances going into this game was different than the last, right? Like last game, uh, they, they, they had back-to-back -back losses, right? And so I knew at the end of that game, either we were going to lose and I wasn't going to be happy, or they were going to lose, they were going to be a three-game losing streak, and I understand the the pressure of a three game losing streak and what can happen you know go into it and so no, you never want to see the people you love go through that so it really wasn't a lot of fun uh this one i mean both teams are i think now in the ncaa tournament i feel like you know we have enough wins that uh we're in the ncaa tournament um now we're not satisfied but i feel like we are and they have 
I mean, they 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 were arguably the hottest team in the league, except for the last two, you know, last two games, the second half of the last game, and then this this game. So um, yeah, the circumstances are so different now that I feel like I was able to enjoy this more. Marquise, ten assists, zero turnovers. Um, just how how important is it for him to be able to? limit those turnovers and as a plus be able to dish out like he did tonight yeah no i mean that's you know we've said all along that was our achilles heel and when both he and Keontae and Keontae had three and he had zero so that's 14 assists and three turnovers between the two guys that are going to have the ball in their hands the most then that's that's really good it gives you a chance and if we don't turn the ball over we're, we're hard to beat and I asked him about this, but he he didn't make a three pointer tonight. But he had a lot of two point shots. Just how much better is he when he's able to get those easy shots to fall? Well, I think it's the ponytail, right? Like he's gone to the back to the front ponytail now, and the last two games, and he's been a lot better. But you know, we're, we're, when when the guys around those two guys make shots, whether it's Cam or Ish, you know, whoever Desi. When those guys are around there, David rolling to the rim, Quan, when they start making shots, it, it makes the game so much easier for those, the other two guys. And so we need Cam to be aggressive and, and to play with energy. And so I thought, like, his rebounding, right? Like, I mean, that, that was his rebounding. You know, that, that's, those are energy plays. How, how rejuvenating how rejuvenating has this two game homestand been for you guys i mean it, it's in it, it's there's just no like substitute for being able to play at home in front of your own fans and all that i, I actually went back and looked at the big 12 schedule cuz um i mean when teams play back to back road games like it's hard to win that second one i think i think um the school up the road was the only one that won back-to-back -back road games uh you know uh and then we did it early so we did it early in the 12 and they did it early in the 12 and but once you hit you know february and you know the grind and stuff it's just hard that second game and you know i thought early in the second half they didn't have energy and i, I was hoping we can get some separation and but then we let them back in the game and so but we were able to do it in the second half and then Baylor's backcourt is obviously phenomenal. How huge is it to, to hold Adam Flagler just four points in the game? Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think we held him to that. I think Adam had an off night tonight, and um, it happens from time to time. I mean, you know, we were really, uh, I mean, LJ Cryer's shots were incredible. Like every time, every offensive rebound, he seemed to make a three you know, that they had. And so, yeah, Adam, Adam just had an off night tonight. You talked about when you limit turnovers, you're hard to beat. Also, you guys were able to get out in transition, get some easy baskets. That seems to have been something maybe been missing a little bit too. Did you, did you feel like you guys did a better job of running the break? Yeah, no, well, we, in one of our staff meetings a few, um, few games ago, we were just evaluating where we were at and how we were playing and how we can get better. And uh, Anthony Winchester um, actually said, hey, coach, you know, early in the year we would get a rebound and, and you were going, go. And now we're getting rebounds and you're going, hey, hold it up. And, and he just asked why. And uh, initially I was very defensive. And then I went home and I thought about it. And I, I did. I watched film and I was like, Man, he's absolutely right. So I came back the next day and I said, hey, you know, A.W. is right in the staff meeting. Like, I, I, I am doing this a lot rather than go. And so we've tried to go back to just playing with more freedom. And so I think that's helped us. I think you've split against every team until tonight. Is that just sort of a testament to what the, what the Big 12 is, is like, that you've gone one and one against every team up to now? Yeah, um, yeah this league is... It's like just really, really good, man. And uh, I, I'm just telling you, I think all 10 teams in our league can win a game in the NCAA tournament. And I mean, you just look at some of the teams, like as opposed to some of the other leagues, and no knock on any other league, but when, you know, the team that right now has five wins in our league beat the second place team in some of the other leagues by 40 points, 
you know, it just kind of tells you, like, you know, what we what we face every night, and not just the 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 talent of the team, but how well they are coached, and you know, just it's 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 just a it's just rough, man. It is. So you have to celebrate wins and 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 try to figure out a way to get get one. You know, just just the next one, whatever it is. First score of the game, Noel. It's a lob pass to Keonta, and he throws it in for a dunk. Looked pretty easy. Was that uh, something you drew up heading into the game? Uh, yeah, you know, um, there was, like, multiple options on that, and that was the first one, and we happened to get it. And so, yeah, we, we felt like we could throw over the top some on them, and, and we were able to get a couple of those. See, I know you're a guy who maybe is superstitious when you see something happen in one game, it helps the player down the line. Is Keontae the kind of guy, if he gets a quick score like that, you think it builds his confidence and he can have a big game? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't, like, really broke that down, but that is a good point. Maybe something I've got to look at um, because we had done a, a thing on Keith, and when he makes a three in the first four minutes of the game, he was averaging 27, and so we was trying to get him three. You know, I mean, it's just you try to look at everything that can give you an advantage, and maybe that's something I need to look at. Got a school record at night, your seventh win against the AP top 25 team. Congratulations on that. How big time is that? Man, uh, it's, we, we are blessed. Uh, God is just, and it, it's not, I want to say, I, I hope you, it's not me. It's, I got a terrific staff, and we got a, a great team, and, and God's just been, like, really, really good to us. You're, you're like, when y'all say those numbers, it, it's really crazy because, it took so it took a while to be able to to accumulate those type of numbers when we started at Baylor, and so I, I don't take it lightly that that we've had this kind of success um, early, and I know that it's a testament to the faithfulness of God and His favor on our program. And just what kind of momentum do you guys have right now? <laughs> we um. You know, momentum's a crazy thing, uh, and it's easy to easier to build it at home. And so, you know, I'll let you know after the Oklahoma State game <laughs> what kind of momentum we have. I do like how we're playing, and I like the energy that we're playing with. And I think as a staff, we're doing uh, a better job of, of being mindful of our guys and their bodies and rest and those things. Hey, Jerome. How you doing, John? Good. Um, yeah, I obviously you don't want to give up a double double to Jonathan every day, John. But uh, it's got to be kind of heartwarming for you to see him back and playing. Yeah, more more than heartwarming, John. Um, so I take a nap before games, right? That's one of my things. So I was the Texas Tech game when they played Texas Tech. I was laying on the couch taking a nap. The TV was on. My wife was watching the game and. There's a couple of games she switched to the Baylor game and she hollers, Jonathan's in the game. And so I pop up and, and man, he's out there and he's flying around and then he hits the three. And, and I mean, it was everything I could do not to cry, right? Because I was there when the injury took place and I was there that night and the next morning and then the surgery and then with the report from the doctor and you're thinking, man, two years, maybe never. And to see his hard work and to see all that just, uh, that, that young fellow, man, he's he's just a special human being, and I'm so thankful and happy that he's back playing. And um, you know, if if if, and we know if anybody could do it, Jonathan Chamo Chachua could. You know, uh, Jerome, I think you told us when you were the interim coach in Vegas two years ago that LJ could be Baylor's best freshman guard, but he wouldn't get a chance to play. What have you seen from LJ over the last two years? And what's it been like, you know, coaching against him now? Oh, I hate coaching against LJ Cryer. Um, he is might be the best shooter in the country. And you you can't like give him space and you always have to know where he is. It's, he's the one of the few guys in the country that you have to account for him when somebody else on the team shoots because they do such a good job of finding him on offensive rebounding. And so um but his development, I mean, in the first half, I think he had four assists. Like, so he wasn't just making shots. He was, he was making plays. And so his development as a player and, uh, you know, you watch him sit down and defend. And I remember the time when he, he made the comment like, man, these dudes, 
these dudes want me to be Patrick Beverly, right? <laughs> like, nah, bro, just want you to play some. And now he's like, a, I mean, he's a willing and able defender, and he fights in the post, and he he just does so many good things. It's it, it's fun when we're not playing against him to watch him play and to watch his development. The, the, well, it, it's not it's not about locked in. I don't think it's ever wa about locked in. It's about whether um, we have legs or not right now and whether we're fresh or not. And so um, they've got two days off. I'm going to see them on Thursday night. We're going to have a short, concise prep. Uh, we're not going to tax their, their body a lot, but what we, what we do is gonna, we're going to go hard I and mean, it's going to be very short and so that we're fresh. And then we're going to go down to Oklahoma State and, and give them our very best. But they're another team that, you know, I mean, <laughs> they're just really, really good. And so we're, we're going to see. But it, it's never been – I mean, it's only been once or twice this year where I didn't think that we were, like, locked in. You know, uh, these guys care. Our guys care. And, and um, they, they love each other. And they, they do their darndest, right, and sometimes in, in an effort to do – uh, you know, try to win and do stuff. They they make mistakes, and so that's just part of this whole thing. But but they've always been locked in. Oh, you should have tossed it to him. See his hands. Sorry. <laughs> um, you talk a lot about this team caring. Where do you think that comes from for them to care so much about them, each other, winning, everything you guys talk about? Well, they spend a lot of time together. Um, away from us. Marquise has done a great job of gathering them in the off season and the preseason and doing stuff together. And they've, they've learned each other's stories and they've all um, been through some things in their life, you know, and, uh, and so when you know someone's story and you understand the why of what they do, uh, it allows you to, to empathize and to really like and, and because they are high character guys, because they are really good people, um, that's what allows them to care. And they've got big hearts. And so, and that's, that's, that's you know, I told you all, like last time, we, I, we wanted to find guys that we didn't mind losing with. And uh, in losses, you see guys, a lot about guys' character. And it, when we were losing, when we lost games, uh, we didn't see – we didn't see a lot of negative things, right? We saw guys that were encouraging each other and lifting each other up, and therefore that's how we knew as a staff that we had to figure out what the solution was for them because they cared, and so. Can you explain how maybe unique or rare it is to be able to establish such a high care factor for these for a team in their first year together, and you know they don't know each other, so many new guys. Can you just explain how rare it is to maybe be able to establish something like that? Man, I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to coach a few more years to figure out if this is rare or not. But I'm, I hope that we have, because of the makeup of our staff, and how we live life together, and the example that we set for them, uh, with how we love our wives and how we love each other and how we care about each other and serve each other, that um, that our guys see that and they they want to emulate it, and that that's that, that's the, the hope. Hey, thank you guys.